I'm not going to ask you to compute spline coefficients yourself. It's a fun little exercise. It's not hard, but it's also not that interesting. So what we're going to do is use MATLAB's built-in tools to do this for us, but I'm going to ask you to understand the output. So what we're going to do is that spline command. When we say pp equals spline of x and y, there is a whole bunch of work that happens, and it actually builds a linear system for the coefficients of the cubics. And then there's a b in there. So it actually creates a big linear system of equations, just like we did when we did the temperature model. And it solves them, and then it gives you back the answer. But the nice thing is it's linear. So however much data you have solving for these coefficients, even though they're cubic equations, cubic functions, the solving for the coefficients is a linear system, so it, it's fast. You don't have to worry about speed for this. And it's straightforward to do. Even better, uh, what we get is we, the user needs to provide two sets of errors, so the set of x, y points, and this is a perk, two additional pieces of information. All right. So when we set up our system of equations, it turns out that we have just enough data, except I need two more things. It's almost enough, except I need two more things. And this is great because we can actually choose something extra to, to fine tune. So we got a rough approximation. Let me put it back up here. Ooh, not that one. <laughs> the other one, the better one. We got this graph, but this is the default. This is the, ah, uh, I'm going to make two assumptions based on what you gave me, and maybe those are right, maybe those are wrong. We can fine tune this a little bit further by choosing two other parameters. And I'll show you the ones in MATLAB in particular. But basically, the standard options are, and depending on your software, are that you know the derivative at the endpoints, or there's some other definitions about what happens at the endpoints, so the sort of low energy uh, configuration. This is the one we're going to look at known derivatives. So here's how we're going to specify this. If we take a look at the spline, this is the thing that creates the coefficients for our spline. Now, right now it's x comma y. And I'm suggesting that we replace that with the y value gets expanded. It gets a 1 and a 0 out front. One, 1 out front, 0 afterwards. So we've got our data collection of y's, the 0, 1, blah, blah, blah. And now we're putting a 1 out front and a 0 at the back end. And we're going to take a quick look at the graph before we did that. There's our graph now. And then we're going to run it again. Ah. We've gotten rid of the wiggle. There's none of that little bendy stuff happening at the far end now. So somehow those two pieces of information we're allowed to specify have helped us to get rid of a property that we didn't like in the interpolation, something that didn't suit us, at least visually. All right. So this flattened out the, uh, the right side. It used to be two points like this, and the graph used to go like that. And then it turned into a much smoother looking flat curve there. OK. So we did something in the code. Something changed in the output. That's nice. It would be nice to understand that a little bit better, though. Let's experiment. Uh, let me put a 3 here as the second number and just see what happens. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, OK, let me put a minus 1 and see what happens. Interesting. What do you think? Anyone have any ideas for what that number might represent in the graph we're getting? Yeah. Slope. The sl exactly. Known derivative, slopes. Hey, what's the slope at the end here? It's negative. You have to take a close look, but it turns out it's actually negative 1 slope. When I set it to minus 0.5, I should see a shallower but still negative slope. Oh, yeah, shallower but still negative slope. Let's go down to 0 0.1 or something. And we get a shallower still slope. But we get the arch to kind of compensate for that. And then the value we tried before was actually 0, which said, hey, I'd like it to be flat at the endpoint. And that's what we got. We can also do it at the front. The slope here is about 1, as it turns out. But I could make it negative something, which would look very strange. But maybe that's what we want. 
not minus 21. That's probably a little aggressive. But we can force the slope to be awkward here and point down, even though the data is going up. We can force the spline to do that by tailoring those two input values. We would not do that in this case. <laughs> now, it's a bit unfortunate that it's either specify both of these, the start slope and the end slope, or specify neither. Those are your two options in MATLAB. Uh, there's other software that can be a little more flexible, but this covers an amazing array of cases when you're doing interpolation. Specifying these slopes along with the structure is that's a fantastic way to go. OK. So that gives us the extra flexibility that we might want. All right, slope at first and last data point. Questions or comments about that and about the modification to the code? Yeah? How do you know what the start and end of the slope is? How do you know what the start and end of the slope is? In most cases, honestly, you don't. <laughs> so you would guess this to be one, or you'd look at your data points. In fact, that's what I did do. I looked at my two data points and said between x's at 0 to 1 and between y at 0 to 1, so the slope would be 1. So I'll guess slope 1. That's right, because it's only going to specify the slope at the beginning and the end. Whatever happens in the middle, the spline's supposed to take care of that for you. Exactly. So it's something that, again, because you don't know what, there is no right answer, you would dial it up or dial it down, usually according to what you are liking or not liking about the graph. It's usually is that subjective. In the workspace, there's uh, where it shows like, the little icon. PP, yes. What does this, right, if you look at all these fancy values here, they're all matrices except for PP. We're actually going to look at that next class. So we will, we will dissect PP so we know what the heck it is. But it is a piecewise polynomial. And actually, if you take a look at it now, you should be able to guess a little bit about it. I've got a polynomial on different intervals. What do you think the breaks represent? Where it switches. Where it switches, exactly. Hey, what were my data points? My data points were exactly 0, 1, 2. These are my data points. So if you look at the graph and say, hey, I've got a polynomial on this first interval between break 0, 1, and then between break 1 and 2, and then there's going to be another polynomial between breaks 10 and 20. You can pretty much infer a lot of this just by looking at it. But we will take a closer look next class. Perfect. In fact, I think that's basically where we are in the notes. Yes. So I will say this. Uh, whenever you're using CAD CAM stuff, the default thing for smooth interpolants is going to be a spline. I guarantee it. They're also sometimes called Bezier curves, which are related to splines, a little variation. Uh, but you'll see them a lot. And by default, they're the first thing I go to for interpolants. We'll see some other options uh, tomorrow that handle special cases. But if nothing in the next two lectures, remember splines interpolate. That, that's all I'm asking for.